So when I first started on Coastlog, which is literally last year, um, I was 24, also not that long ago. Um, and I really did not know much about startups. I just knew that the world is not getting tested for lung cancer. Uh, the world is getting diagnosed at a late stage. And we had a potential solution to make it easier for people to get tested. Um, that is a great concept. But then how do you execute? And me, I was like sitting down. We had BAD in September. And in October, I was talking to my co-founders like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We need to test patients, right? How many? Yeah, let's say 50 patients. Okay, so we get 50 patients with lung cancer. Should not be that hard. It's just like look for people with lung cancer. Then we tested. We proved the hypothesis. We patent. And in three months, we should be raising our seed round. I 100% believe that was going to be the case. I 100% believed that it was October. And it like February, maybe March tops, we'd be raising a million dollars in our seed round. <laughs> Fast forward to today. We have now, like recently, as in very recently, started our actual trial with lung cancer patients. Turns out it's not as easy. Like you cannot just go to somebody and say, hey, can I, can I like take a sample from your body? You can't do that. I didn't know. Nobody warned me. Um, and then also raising money is kind of hard. <laughs> I, I, my, in my dreams and aspirations, I wanted to start raising the seed early this year, like maybe January, February. And, um, the reality is that it's been a year and almost two months since I had that crazy idea. And it we're now next week starting to raise the fundraise our pre seed round, which means the actual seed round will come literally in a year and a half from now. So that is great. That is like the first fuck up. Let's call it that. And it's a fuck up mentality because uh, it create, creates anxiety, right? Like I had no idea what to expect. So that is um, when things take longer, inevitably, then it's um, a little a little frustrating. So fast forward to, you know, the next months when I started talking to founders, people who have actually done it, I quickly realized that that was not going to be the case. In um, the next months, I traveled to the U.S. because bear in mind, I was in Europe at the time where things are even slower than anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest um and then i say okay i need to go talk to the people that are making it happen europe like everybody in europe is telling me to go do a phd and like you know make sure the science works and then start a company so like no you guys are not getting it i need to raise my seat in january <laughs> i'm getting it i don't have time for a phd <laughs> so i uh traveled to the u.s for three months and really no plan i just like book a ticket to new york like, i'm gonna go to new york see what happens gonna talk to people there three months go by and I end up going to different cities to different events like depending on connections I make and I end up in January in uh, the JP Morgan healthcare conference which is like for anybody that's in healthcare that is the Super Bowl of healthcare it's like the single biggest event of the entire year and everybody that is somebody's there and there I was with my idea literally an idea in a terrible pitch deck and that's it talking to all these you know massive investors and that is like where the fuck up story comes in. Because when you learn, when you, sorry, when you start in this business, there's a lot of things that you have to learn, including who the big players are. And this is my advice for everybody out there listening. Please do your homework before you go to an event like that. Because you might be talking to like a very important person and you don't know who they are. And that's offensive. So I was at an event at JP Morgan and I, all I could do was introduce myself to everybody I could and like start talking to people because obviously nobody knew who I was. And I talked to this person that has a label that says SoftBank. And I'm like, hi, how are you? I'm there, nice to meet you. So tell me about SoftBank. What is your company? Is it a startup? And they go, in case you don't know, SoftBank is one of the biggest investors in the entire planet. They make the type like hundred million investors, sorry, hundred million dollar investments in things like WeWork or yet the huge, like the biggest startup that you've ever seen in the world. Like everybody knows the SoftBank is. And I am a so-called entrepreneur and I'm asking the SoftBank person, Kai, tell me about SoftBank. Pathetic, pathetic, pathetic. I have to say um, this SoftBank person is really nice 
And you know what he did? He told me what something does. Like he literally pitched something. <laughs> he literally pitched something. He's like, oh yeah. So we are a hundred trillion, billion, trillion, million, quadrillion dollar um, investment bank. And we invest in companies such as WeWork and um, FTX. I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Have a good day. And then he's like, I got to go catch up with somebody there. See you around. Yeah, I'll see you around. Uh, so yeah, that's my fuck up story. Awesome. Really good one. <laughs> How did you get then in, into the accelerator? Was was that because of the uh, because of him? Uh, because of the South Bank guy? No, 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 no. Um, because of one of actually one of the uh, investors. I bet they don't mention we work today. Ah, uh, I bet they don't either. They're like, yeah, we do investments. That's it, and they leave it there because FTX is another one, right? So they just like we invest. <laughs> that's it <laughs> no I'm kidding um, the accelerator uh, we had some of the people from Start Uber some of the startups that you might know Jens um, one of them they're also a diagnostic company it, it, they went through this accelerator and they recommended it so that's how we ended up here right. no fuck ups just, just pitched <laughs> <laughs> not yet <laughs> oh yeah no yeah well it's been a while it's been three months no fuck ups yet yay at least I'll <laughs> with the accelerator yeah, congratulations. And like I said to you in, in person already, I follow you and I think you, you're you on a journey. And Thank it's, you, Jens. It's, it's it fascinating to, to see you. I mean, I, I have met you before you started that, which is the fun thing. Right, <laughs> right, right. When I was like still not knowing what something was. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Good. thank you. And Any questions to Andrea from the audience or the speakers? Hey, Andrea, um, you mentioned about not knowing and not doing your homework around the investors and the people in the room. I mean, when you go into an event like that, you can't know everyone. What do you think that actually gave you any advantage in terms of uh, your position there? Or, or what would you do differently now, knowing what you know? That is a great question. I think it did give me an advantage. So at that same event where I didn't recognize the South Bank guy, uh, turns out, um, I also didn't know what Emerson Collective was, of course, which is the Steve Jobs, like the, the family office from the Steve Jobs family. And I had been talking to the Emerson Collective guy for like literally maybe 20 minutes, like 25 minutes. Me, this other guy and him. And I like, I was no intimidated at all. I wasn't intimidated at all because I didn't know that I was talking to the person that manages the Jobs family money. Um, it, it is an advantage. I would say, um, don't, don't take that risk. Do your homework. Um, read the news. It's that easy. Just like read the news, <laughs> read the newspaper and figure out who the biggest investors in your area are, because it is like, it is, it comes across as super, super unprofessional not to know who the biggest like funds in your area are. So I'm saying, because it happened, I'm looking at the positive sides, which is, you know, maybe I was, I was very non-intimidated and just being myself, but I would certainly not do it again. Elia, yes. Um, so, Andrea, I was wondering, I, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop when you were talking about, you were talking at the, to the soft bank guy, and then you said, oh, okay, I'm just going to go off and talk to somebody else. So I wondered, was there a fuck up in there as well that you didn't mention? When I when I said that, when I said, okay, so the soft bank guy is the one that said I need to go talk to somebody else. Um, is that is that what you were asking? Oh, I thought that was you saying that. Okay. No, I was just wondering if you might have taken advantage of the situation to say, hey, I'd love to have an informational interview with you. Clearly, you know, I need to know more about what banks wow. are doing um, or so find some way of, of staying in touch with them. Would you be kind enough to have a look at my draft and give me some feedback, you know, things like that? Yeah, I think that's a great point. I think there that was that would have been a super long shot. I think there was definitely no room after I did that massive fuck up, which is not recognizing the single biggest investor. Um, I think there was like no no room for that person to take me seriously, and uh, which is okay. It's fine. They, they'll never remember. I I do remember them forever and ever. 
and I'll see them next year and be like, hi, how was this investment that stuff I did yesterday at 10 p.m.? Like, I, that's going to be me next year. <laughs> but you are right. Maybe I should have, like, charmed my way into, I'm so sorry, I'm learning, and I have just been doing this for a few months. It would be great if, you know, maybe can connect, stay connected. At least I, it would have been too much to ask for anything from him, but maybe to stay connected would have been a lot. So that's a great point that I didn't think about. You're right. Thank you. You can still reach out. Maybe he remembers you. You know what? Yes, I think he's, you're right. Who am I kidding? I he'll never it. forget I, about. I, yeah, he'll never forget about the person. It's like it's this woman in her twenties that then shows up to these events. I don't know who I am. <laughs> Sometimes that open doors. Yeah. I also okay. don't think it's ever ever a time not you can always ask because he can always say no. You know? Totally. I, I, so I, right. I always try to go to something like that with a small, medium, and large ask in my back pocket. So that I'm like when I meet someone and someone asks, Oh, how can I help? I've got three things to choose from to get the most out of that person when I meet. You are so 